to our website. And uh, without further ado, please welcome to the stage, everyone, George Rob. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. Thanks for hanging out. This is a very special live seven song. Some of you might tune in on the YouTube occasionally and watch me do this, but I'm very excited. I got 45 minutes, so we're going we're gonna to motor through these things as best as we can. The theme for this episode is summer songs, because, you know, it's a sweaty kind of music fest kind of theme. So come on in, come on in, come on in. All good to go. Summer songs. Our very first song, number one, is by a band called Chicago. Now, uh, this when I hear this when I hear this tune, this just to me just feels so summery. It doesn't have summer in the title, but the song is Saturday in the Park. Saturday in the Park. It's a lovely tune. I don't know if you know that song or not. There's a couple cool things about this. The uh, it's written by Robert Lamb. It's from the album Chicago V. Chicago Five. Um, I was pronounced Chicago V. Uh, from 1972, it's got made-up Italian lyrics. There's a question mark in the lyric sheet in the album notes when he starts singing this made-up Italian. There's just a question mark. Although some say it's from the song E Compare, which is an Italian sort of folk uh, thing. I think it's sung in The Godfather at some point. Uh, and there's a question as to not whether or not those words are being sung or if he's just making stuff up. No one's really sure. Now, there's two things about this tune that are really cool. For the most part of the tune, it's in a straight feel. So it's this kind of straight eighth feel. And two, and three, and four. When it gets to the bridge, it goes to a shuffly swing sort of feel. So it switches from to uh, it's great. It's just all of a sudden they're gonna we're gonna swing, we're gonna shuffle the bridge, because why not? And they do it. So listen for that as this happening. There's another really cool thing about the song. I'm gonna play the first line of the tune. So it's Saturday in the park. I think it was the 4th of July. Now, there's another song that it's very similar to. This fly's gonna be here the whole show, I bet. Fantastic. Uh, there's another song that it's very similar to that uh, Robert Lamb, the guy that wrote it, said he was inspired by. So listen to this. Saturday in the park. I think it was the when I call you up, your lines engaged. It's it's similar. It's really and Robert's like, yes, I totally was inspired by it. But it's a perfect example of being inspired by a piece of music as opposed to just in, interpolating it or outright stealing it. It feels the same, but it sort of changes. Uh, it's a major chord, C major instead of an A minor, like in the Chicago tune. But it's really cool. One more. This is just so much fun to do. A Saturday in the park I think it was the 4th of July When I called you up Your lines engaged Really fun and fun Alright, here it is from 1972 Saturday in the park with its fake Italian words
waiting for us all. If we want it, really want it, can you dig it? Yes, I can. I've been waiting such a long time for the day. Thank you. For both of us, actually, it's for everybody. Again, come on in, come on in, find a seat. Cheers, welcome to Seven Songs. Song number two, I kind of had to do this one. It's got the word summer in the title. This is by uh, Don Henley off the album Building the Perfect Beast in 1984. This is The Boys of Summer, The Boys of Summer. Now, uh, this tune was written by a, a, a member of Tom Petty's band. Uh, but, but, but where is it, where the, what's the person? Uh, uh, Mike Campbell, yeah, Mike Campbell from Tom Petty's uh, band wrote it. Tom Petty heard it and he was like, meh, meh, not so much. And uh, they didn't do it, so uh, it got into Don Henley's hands and Don Henley had probably his biggest hit. So much so that this talks, this is a perfect example, this, this song and Don Henley, it's a perfect example of the anonymity of drummers. Don Henley was the drummer in the Eagles' hugest band at the time through the 70s. He said he was never recognized on the street until he did the video for Boys of Summer. That's when people started coming up and saying, weren't you the Boys of Summer guy? Because drummers are always in the back and no one knows we're in the band. That's the way it works, so it's perfect. Um, this has the wonderful line, one of the best lines, I think, in all of 80s pop. Uh, the encapsulation of the loss of innocence as well as the sort of selling out uh, and, the, and the conflicting nature of capitalism on some level. I saw a deadhead sticker on a Cadillac. It's such a great line. It's this idea that there's a, uh, at the time it was a $20, $21,000 Cadillac that uh, the author saw and it literally had a deadhead sticker. And it was like this, this weird duality of, you know, free love, uh, uh, everything is, is everybody else's and I've got this very expensive car. And it's kind of like what the 80s were about, that sort of duality of it. So uh, it's surprisingly high to sing, but I will do my best. And the other really cool thing about this is the title is sort of uh, uh, three deep in terms of where it comes from. Um, there's a, a book by Roger Kahn called The Boys of Summer, which is about the Brooklyn Dodgers and the Brooklyn Dodgers leaving Brooklyn and all of Brooklyn fans being heartbroken. But that title came from a Dylan Thomas poem called I See the Boys of Summer. So Dylan Thomas to Roger Khan, to Don Henley, it's the boys of summer. Here we go.
It's not in E, like I just did it, and it's not in D, like other people do it, it's actually in E flat. It's right between the two, and to play E flat is just weird. So I went up the step, because I thought it's music fest, let's do it for you fine folks. <laughs> All right, song number three, I had to do this one, and uh, I believe Ms. Info guessed correctly. This is uh, not originally done by, but popularized by the one and only Frank Sinatra. This is Summer Wind. You have to do Summer Wind if you're doing songs about summer. Uh, his version was from 1966, and here's the thing. Originally, it's a German song. It's a German song called Der Sommerwind. Der Sommerwind, er hat gespielt mit meinem Haar. Ich stand am Meer, mir will mein Herz zu einsam war. Doch dann kamst du und sieht gist mir, wir schon der Sterne sind. Und dann so sag. Der Sommerwind. It's not quite as romantic when you do it in German for some reason. It just makes you want to invade Poland, I guess, but it's fine. Um, the translation in, from German, the summer wind, it played with my hair. I was standing by the sea just because my heart was so lonely. But then you came and showed me how beautiful the stars are and the summer wild uh, sang. Just good. It's, it's, it's nice. It's nice. I think the English language uh, are, are, are better. So, um, uh, uh, the English version was uh, written by uh, Johnny Mercer. Johnny Mercer heard the German version. And he thought, no, that's a cool tune, so I'll write the English version. So Wayne Newton was the first person to record it in 65. And then Perry Como recorded it after then, uh, produced by Chet, Chet Atkins, which is crazy. Um, this song is weird in terms of a standard because there's no verse. The verse is kind of that thing that happens before the part of the song you know. You know, every, every standard song has this verse that no one ever sings anymore. This doesn't have a verse. It doesn't really even have a chorus or anything. All it does, it just modulates. It just, it just goes up by a step. So we start in D. So we do the whole, the whole tune, and then we go up to E, we do the whole tune again, and we go up to F sharp, and we do the whole tune again, and then we're done. That's the whole song. It's really, there's like, there's no, it has these lovely transitions, but there's no, there's no thing. It's just three, we used to call that the Christian modulation. At the end of every song, it's always like, he is near, he is near. Um, so it has three Christian modulations in it, and, uh, and that's it. And it's a lovely song. And the very first interval that is sung is a sixth, which is which is neat. In the summer wind, ba -ba. any music theory kids that are looking for a sixth, that's it. Ba -ba. Ba -ba. The summer wind. Cool. Here we go. From 1966, the chairman himself. The summer wind. The summer wind came blowing in from across the sea. Mmm. -hmm. 
Oh, I can, I can take a breath here. I can take a breath. This is good. Come on in. Welcome, welcome. Seven songs. We're doing summer songs, all songs about summer. This next one is uh, by Cheryl Crow from the year 2002, her album called Come On, Come On. This is called Soak Up the Sun. And uh, this is, again, sort of just a quintessential chill, summer, fun tune. The video is just her on a beach. She's got a surfboard, all kinds of stuff. So I started investigating this to see sort of if there's anything interesting. It's a pretty straightforward song, harmonically. Turns out the co-writer of this song, Jeff Trott, was flying from Seattle to New York. And Seattle was miserable weather. And he was heading towards New York where he knew it was nice. And he thought to himself, oh, great, I'm going to go soak up the sun. But how weird, I'm going to New York to go soak up the sun. And then he thought, oh, that's kind of a cool title as well. And when they originally wrote it, it was from the perspective of a kid that was kind of disassociated from his friends. The Columbine massacre had just happened, and it was kind of written like from the viewpoint of one of the of one of those kids, one of the one of the shooters. Very dark, very sort of dark in this kind of idea of like, I'm 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 disaffected, I'm just gonna go like hang outside. And there's this line at the end of the song that I always thought. Uh, she says, uh, I've got my 45 on so I can rock on. I always thought that was SPF, like 45, like she's got her SPF 45 on. But no, it's she's got her 45 on so she can rock on originally. Ah! It totally changes the vibe of the tune. Yeah, crazy, right? Now, they put the video out and, and the Jeff Trott, the guy that, that, that co-wrote it, saw the video and was like, Okay, no, that's not what we wrote at all. It's totally, they totally got rid of all of the undertones of the weirdness. But they kept that line in, presuming that we would think it was about sunscreen, where it was actually about a gun. So it's kind of crazy. So enjoy that. Here we go. Cheryl Crow from 2002. This is uh, Soak Up the Sun. <laughs> See you. 
Speaking of songs that are sort of darker than, than they sound, I'm a big fan of tunes that sound a certain way but have a very, very different message within them. I always like that when you can, as a, as, a, as a songwriter, if you can get across this idea of like, and it's really dark when you get into the, uh, into the material, uh, or opposite to where you get a very sort of dark sounding thing and you like examine it and it might be a very positive sort of song. It's a challenging thing to do and to be able to do that. What's, uh, oh, what's that one song about heroin? Uh, uh, there's a, oh, shoot. The, the Rembrandts, I think? They're not the Rembrandts. It's my, my favorite song. Uh, um, oh, there she goes, yeah. There she goes, there she goes again. That's about a heroin addict. Yeah, 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 it's amazing. Ruin another song for you, right? Exactly, I know. But that's what I mean. You would never know, but you start looking at the words, it's like, oh, wow. So it's kind of cool that you can kind of sneak in and hide the thing. So this next song is by Elvis Costello, who, who is a, sort of a master at doing this. Uh, he does straightforward songs that are sort of sad, straightforward songs that are happy, but then he can sneak in different things. This is called The Other Side of Summer. This is from an album called Mighty Like a Rose um, from 1991. And he, was, he, he wanted it to sound like a Beach Boys song. He wanted it to be kind of a Beach Boys produced record. Um, so much so he actually had the, the keyboardist, Larry uh, Nechtel, who played with Brian Wilson, plays keys on this thing. Lots of multi-track guitars, lots of multi-track vocals. And it's a very dark song talking about kind of the price of summer. How like if you have a beautiful home, there are people that have to take care of that home. The, the gardeners and whatever. And often these sort of juxtaposed things lie right next to each other. Especially in a place like Los Angeles or something like that where you have these multi-million dollar homes and, and homeless people right next to each other. So he talks about the other side of summer. One thing in this song that I really love is he takes a jab at both uh, John Lennon and, um, and Roger Waters. There's a, line, there's a line during the song, he says, um, was it a millionaire who said, imagine no possessions? <laughs> a poor little schoolboy who said, we don't need no lessons. That's, uh, you know, we don't need no education, Roger Waters from the Paul. So, and it's, he's constantly doing that. And this is, again, you know, Elvis worked with Paul McCartney. So he's, there's a Beatles connection there directly, and, and he co-wrote songs with Paul McCartney. But it's a, it's a great line, and it's a really good dig. There's wonderful footage uh, from an SNL, uh, again, 1991, Saturday Night Live. He played this song, and he played a song called Candy. It's got this big beard, glasses, he barely moves or anything. It's like he's in this weird Brian Wilson phase, I guess. It's, if you can find it on YouTube, it's really wonderful. So um, there's a, 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 some cool harmonic things that are happening in this song in that it goes between major and minor. So we all know major is a major third. It gives you that happy sound, quote unquote. Minor has a minor third. It gives you that minor sad sound. This tune has Gs and Ds and Cs. When it goes into the verses, you have these D minors and G minors and A's. And it's great the way it switches between the two. And it goes back to a D major. So listen for that sort of tonality switching between major and minor. Major, minor. It's really neat. Now, I need your help in one spot. There's two places where there's a callback. I go, yeah, 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 yeah. What I'll do, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do my flamingo stance when it's coming, okay? Because it goes like this. So it goes, um, and I felt glad in my own suspicious way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. That happens twice. Right at the beginning of the song and after the second chorus. All right. Ooh, that's so exciting. Here we go. All right. Here it is from uh, from 1991. This is the other side of summer. <laughs> So I'm going to try to not do it like Elvis because the temptation is to do so yeah, I'm not going to do that. You can do that later. Yeah, we'll do that later. Yeah, here we go. 
The sun struggles up another beautiful day And I feel bad in my own suspicious way Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Despite the contradictions and confusions Felt tragic without reason There's malice and there's magic in every season From the foaming breakers of the poisonous surf The other side of summer the burning forests and the hills of AstroTurf, the other side of summer. The automatic gate closed up between the shanties and the palace. The blow torch amusements, the voodoo chalice, the pathetic promise that everybody swallows. A teenage girl is crying because she don't look like a million dollars. So help her if you can, because she don't seem to have the attention span. From the foaming breakers of the poisonous surf, the other side of summer. The burning forests and the hills of AstroTurf, the other side of summer. Was it a millionaire who said, imagine no possessions? A poor little schoolboy who said, we don't the red red dogs ransack the shampoo shop. A pop princess is downtown shooting up. And if that goddess is fit for burning, the sun will struggle up, the world will still keep turning. Madman standing by the side of the road, saying, Look at my eyes, look at my eyes, look at my eyes, look at my eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Their mistake, you better be wide awake. From the foaming breakers of the poisonous surf, the other side of summer, the burning forests and the hills of Astro Turf, the other side of summer, the mightiest rose, the absence of perfume, the casual killers, the military curfew, the cardboard city, an unwanted birthday, the other side of summer. Scene was desperate, the music was worse. They bury your dreams and dig up the worthless. Good night, God bless, and say goodbye to the earth. The other side of summer, the other side of summer, the other side. Oh, oh, oh. The other side. Yes, that was perfect. Yeah. What is it about a group that just go, says a thing in unison? It's so, it's so satisfying, right? Uh, that's why I love the band Cake. The band Cake all the time, like every third song, they just it randomly the band goes, hey, or yeah, and it's like five of them going, who? It's just the coolest. It's like some primal tribal. I love it. I love it. All right, we're uh, ooh, rolling along. Okay, now this next tune is a little bit of a cheat. A little bit of a cheat. It's not really a summer song, but it's by like the ultimate summer band, which I've already mentioned. So it's by the Beach Boys, because, you know, is there another summer band that's more summery than the Beach Boys? But the song is God Only Knows. Uh, I just, I love this song. This is like, so many musicians list this as their favorite song. Um, uh, and what's interesting, there's a couple interesting things. Uh, one is that only uh, Brian, uh, not Brian Wilson, only um, Carl Wilson plays guitar on it. And apart from singing, there's no Beach Boys on the track anywhere else. It's all the Wrecking Crew, which is this very famous recording group of musicians from California. Wonderful documentary called The Wrecking Crew. Check that out. It's really, really fantastic. They played on everything on everything. And it it garners the the question or the debate about like the monkeys. I'm a big monkeys fan. And people say, oh the monkeys didn't play their records. It's like, you know what? No one played on their own records back then. Like no one played there were as many monkeys on this album as there on God only knows as there are Beach Boys pretty much. So it's this it's this strange argument that, that gets fostered all the time. So um, this song uh, uh, harmonically does a very strange thing. 
it does a very strange thing. And I'm gonna to try to explain it as best as I can because it's very weird. But for the most part, we are in A. It starts here sort of. I may not always love you. And we're kind of rolling around in A. When it gets to the instrumental section, it's a verse and a chorus and a verse and a chorus. It gets to the instrumental section, we switch over to, we go to like, to, 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 to uh, what do we go to? We go sort of to D. We have this, it's the same chords that happen in the verse, but now we're, we're, we're in a different key all of a sudden. And while we're in that key, uh, the, the, the end of the chorus comes back in the new key. So like normally it would be a, here. When we come out of the bridge, out of the instrumental section, it goes, God only knows what I'd be without you. It's up a fourth, right? So you would think, okay, the melody is going to stay there, and it's going to go, it's going to go, if you should ever leave me. But it doesn't. It goes back to the original. It goes back to, it goes back to, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, instead of here, <laughs> if you should ever leave me, it goes back to here. thing. It's like it's this, this key change happens, and we're in this new key, and then all of a sudden it's like, no, we're back in the original key, because the melody line lands perfectly where it happens. So again, I'm going to show that real quick. So here's like the interlude. try to do it right and uh here it is from 1966 from the album pet sounds this is god only knows let's see if i can do this be okay. It's basically what he's saying. <laughs> I may not always love you. That's the first line of a love song. What? It's like, it's like a verse, you know? If you should ever leave me. What? Yeah, but it's the most beautiful, pretty, lovely love song. Alright. I think we have time for one more. Oh, perfect. I know. Crazy, right? Uh, if you like what you hear, I do this on YouTube, uh, but occasionally. I try to get it more regular rotation happening. We're, this is episode 37. Is that what it says? 
This is episode 38. So there are 37 shows uh, on my YouTube. It started as 13 songs originally, and uh, that was just like way too long. So we thought seven songs sounds good. Seven songs, just as the uh, pandemic hit, uh, I, I sort of rebranded and started doing this. You can go to my YouTube channel. Just Google my, my name, my last name. H-R-A-B is unique enough that the first 47,000 things are me. So it's kind of nice that way that works out. <laughs> there was one like carpet cleaning guy in Toronto, I think, his name George Harb. So there is a guy named George Harb, and I've talked about him before. There's a guy in upstate New York. His name is George Harb, H-A-R-B, and he's an Elvis impersonator. And I've written to him like four times. I'm like, dude, I promise this is not spam. Like, we gotta do a show together. This would be so much fun. We do the Harb, Harb, vowel shift, you know, tour. <laughs> You know, vowel movement with harab and harb. I think it'd be so good, right? <laughs> Boo. Boo. And he doesn't respond. He doesn't respond. He is on Spotify, though, so go, go check out George Harb. It's amazing. It's amazing. This last song is a fun one. This is from uh, perhaps one of the most iconic 80s tune, uh, bands, I should say, um, and the only band, I think, to ever feature prominent water skiing in their, in their video. Anybody have a guess out there? The Go-Go's, that's right, because it's vacation. We're all going to sing this together at the end of this thing. It'll be perfect. Okay, so yeah, so this is vacation. Now, the, the, it's a straightforward tune, but one thing that's fascinating about this song is they, they, they recorded the tune, they fixed it, they finished it, and they were mastering it, and the producer at the time, was that what? Oh, jeez. Okay, my gosh, this whole, that row is just like adamantly. Flip the number, damn it. Flip the number, let's go. Oh, please thank the front row. There. Song number seven is by the Go Go's. It's vacation. And um, so they were mastering it, right? And they gave all the ladies in the band cassette copies to take home to listen. This is 19, uh, 1982, this is like 81, 82. They, they, gave, they, they, they burned off some cassettes, they went home, the ladies loved it, the ladies loved it, they brought it back, and they go to master it, and it doesn't sound as good as the cassette. There's like, it doesn't, there was, there's something, they start working on it, and they're working on the mix, and then working on the mix, and they're working on the mix, and they can't get it to sound as good as the cassette sounds. So this is the first time ever that a full, a full uh, 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 you know, release happened based, and it was mastered off of the cassette. So they took the cassette, and that became the master. So if you have a CD of this, or an LP of this, or whatever version of it you may have, it's literally taken, it's a copy of a copy, because they like the sound of it. And then, sort of to make it even more cassette-y, this was the first single. Remember cassingles? So yeah, so that for those of you that were not born 20 years ago, um, oh, by the way, the Sheryl Crow song is 20 years old, which is insane, but yeah, anyway. Because uh, singles were cassettes that had like maybe two tunes on them, like one on each side, maybe like maybe four, and it was just like seven minutes, and just, oh, it was great, just a total plastic waste, and it was fantastic. So this was the first single, was Vacation by the Go-Go's. So uh, I'm gonna burn through this thing, and please, uh, please feel free to sing along as we get there, and if you wanna do the, the go-go's dance, it's totally cool. The Belinda. Do the Belinda, which, yeah. Uh, here we go.
Thanks for hanging out. Good night!